right, so today I'd like to talk a bit about blasphemy. Blasphemy is a word that we don't use very much. It's kind of a you know Bible word. Um, people will often talk about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, like what does that mean? What is blasphemy exactly? And uh, particularly, how is blasphemy going to play a role during the end times? And this isn't something that I've really talked about before. But I want to talk about it today because I think it's um, playing into our world right now. And it's also a part of the end time story we read in Revelation that the beast has blasphemous names that are written on him. So let's just have a simple definition of what blasphemy is uh, from, from the biblical point of view. Blasphemy means to slander or to exchange right for wrong and evil for good. It comes from the Strong's uh, number 988, and the word is blasphemia, which is pretty much what blasphemy sounds like in the English language. But the application for blasphemy, how we apply it in um, scripture, is that it's really talking about taking divine attributes and putting them on something that's not divine, or taking something that's wicked and applying it to God. So blaspheming the Holy Spirit basically is saying that the the works of the Spirit that you know God does are actually the works of the enemy or Satan. You can't attribute the works of God to Satan or the works of Satan to God and be living in the realm of truth. Okay, and so that's basically what blasphemy is. It's exchanging true things for lies and lies for the truth. So Romans one um, twenty five talks about people who do this, and it says, uh, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. So uh, most people are familiar with what is happening in Romans chapter one, but the main point I'm making is that this exchange of the truth for the lie is what is the essence of blasphemy. Another passage we can look at is Matthew 26 verses 63 through 65 and this is when Jesus was on trial uh, before the high priest. Um, it says this, but Jesus remained silent and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you're the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. From now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You've now heard his blasphemy. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. And his claim was considered blasphemy by those who didn't recognize his deity. They didn't know, they didn't recognize that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. They didn't recognize that. And so they thought that Jesus was attributing things to himself that were wrong. Um, but they were wrong because all those things were uh, applied to Christ. In John 10, 32 and 33, Jesus answered them, I've shown you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, It's not for a good work that we're going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. All right, so this is um, an example of how people were attributing blasphemy to Jesus, okay, that Jesus was claiming to be something that he wasn't. Now let's take a look at Revelation and see how it's used here, how this whole idea of blasphemy and exchanging truth for lies and lies for the truth works out in the end times. Revelation 17, 3. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. If you watched my last video about all the beasts in Revelation, you'll recognize this as the scarlet beast. This is the seventh king. This is the rider on the white horse. This is the person we would think about or call the Antichrist. In this 
um, instance here, we recognize that the harlot is still the one that's in control, uh, and the beast that she's writing has uh, blasphemous names written on it. Now, you'll notice that the woman, the harlot, does not have blasphemous names written on her. Okay, she is not going to claim to be the Christ or God or the Antichrist or anything like that. Okay, she, she doesn't really care about that sort of thing. But the beast has blasphemous names that are written on him. We'll talk about those names and what they might be in just a minute. Revelation 13, 1. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads and ten diadems on his horns and blasphemous names on his heads. Here we read that the blasphemous names are on his heads. We didn't read that before with the scarlet beast. We just knew that there were blasphemous names that were on him. And now we see that the blasphemous names are written on his heads. And of course the head is the seat of intellect and the will. And this beast who rises from the sea of death is going to attribute godlike or Christ-like characteristics to himself. And we've already talked about this in terms of the great deception that's coming on the world. The great deception is that the beast is going to claim to be Christ. And all the events that are going to lead up to the abomination of desolation, people are going to think that this man who also died and raised from the dead, who killed the two witnesses, who may be confused with the false prophet and the, the beast, um, he's going to come off as a hero and as Christ, and things are going to be orchestrated so it looks that way. Okay, and I talk about that in my video on deceptions. This resurrected beast is going to have names on his horns. Names like Christ, or King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God, Messiah, Deliverer, or any other name or title that belongs solely to Christ. He is going to claim to be all the things that Christ is. It's all a lie. It, he's exchanging it, the truth for the lie. And people are going to believe it. This resurrected beast from the sea is going to be a boaster and a liar. And like King Nebuchadnezzar before him, uh, he will not acknowledge God as sovereign over all. But worse than that, he's going to attribute Christ-like and God-like attributes to himself. Let's take a look at Revelation 13, 5 and 6. And the beast was given a mouth. Okay, Up until this point in time, he doesn't have a mouth. He doesn't have a way of expression because the harlot has been writing him. And she's the one who's been expressing her attributes. But now he has a mouth. He's going to be given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous or lying words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. And it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling. That is those who dwell in heaven. So here is a clear verse that tells us there's going to be people dwelling in heaven uh, prior to the time when the beast begins a 42-month reign. Okay, These are people, believers, who are already in heaven. There will have already been two raptures by this point in time. The harlot will have killed millions and millions and millions of people in her um, drunken rampage and of course the earth dwellers are going to buy into what she's enticing them to do which is kill Christians but he's going to be given a mouth and he is going to utter these lies about himself and about God and about believers Revelation 2 9 I know your tribulation and your poverty but you are rich and the slander or blasphemies of those who say they are Jews, but are not, but are of a synagogue of Satan. It's not until the blasphemous words appear on the seven heads that the beast is given a mouth to actually express his sentiments. The rider on the white horse, who is equated with the seventh king and the scarlet beast, will have already um, been given a crown and a bow with which to ride on the scene as the conquering hero slaying the wicked, 
saving the righteous, the so-called righteous, but they're not. They're, they're evil, wicked, and they're the earth dwellers. Upon his resurrection from the sea of death, which is something Christ will allow because Christ is the one who has the keys to death and Hades, he's going to allow this beast to rise from the dead. This son of the dragon will have also been given all the power and authority of the dragon who is Satan. So the beast is going to use his newly acquired authority and his mouth that he's just been given to tell lies about God, lies about Christ, and to slander and lie about raptured and resurrected believers who live in heaven. So for 42 months, the beast will exchange the truth about God and Christ for the lie that he is God, that he is the Christ, that he is the one. He will deceive the people who, by the way, are only going to be too happy to be deceived. These are people who do not love the truth, so they're going to believe the lies that the beast is going to tell about himself and about Christians and about God. Um, and what he's going to say is that the true Christ, our Jesus that we worship, is an imposter, and that God is a, the creator God that we worship and call our Father is the evil usurper. And that believers who've recently been taken into heaven were taken because they were a blight on humanity or whatever other reason they're going to come up with that will suit the narrative. And they're going to say that heaven, uh, the place where we've gone, the place where God dwells, is actually the place where the wicked, wicked by their standards, uh, are going to be tormented and punished. It's all backward. It's all upside down. The end time deception promoted by the beast will be reinforced by the signs and miracles and the false prophets going to do all these wonders. And the Lord and us, the Lord's people, are going to be portrayed as devils and as Satan, while the beast and the, and the dragon masquerade as angels of light and the beast taking the role and usurping the place of Christ. He will promote himself as the true deliverer, the true savior, the one who saved the earth dwellers from the horrible God, who was the usurper of the true God, who, according to them and according to the beast, is Satan. Daniel talks about this a little bit as well. In Daniel 7, verse 8, while I was contemplating the horns, suddenly another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were uprooted before it. And this horn had eyes like those of a man, and a mouth that spoke words of arrogance. And Daniel 11:36. Then the king will do as he pleases, and will exalt and magnify himself above every god. And he will speak monstrous things against the God of gods. And he will be successful until the time of wrath is completed, for what has been decreed must be accomplished. The foundation upon which the lies and blasphemy of the beast and the dragon and the false prophet will, will be built is in fact already being laid. And I think you can see that. It's the, the harlot, the New World Order, the mystery Babylon system that is laying this foundation right now for the lies that are going to be told when the beast comes on the scene. Already we can see that the Antichrist spirit in the world is promoting the idea that the God of the Bible is either a myth or he's an impotent absentee God who doesn't really care or he's a vengeful and punishing God, and that Christians with their narrow-minded perspectives and phobias and values pose a clear and present danger to the health and safety of the people of the world and even to the planet itself. And these intolerant and bigoted Christians must conform or be eliminated. And that's something we can see happening right now. And it's the harlot who is paving the way for this beast that's going to be coming on the scene. And this attitude that the harlot is promoting right now against Christians will continue to be promoted by the beast after he begins his reign. And he's going to point to his victory over the two witnesses, as well as his resurrection from the dead, as proof 
that he is the real King of Kings, the real Lord of Lords, the rightful Messiah and true Savior of the world. Only he's not the King. It will all be a big lie. It's blasphemy. So let me know what you think. We'll see you on another video. Till then, have a blessed day.